Hey there friends, welcome back to my second video for January. If you're new here, my name is Carrie. So glad to have you stop by. For those of you coming back for round two of January, welcome back friends. I hope you enjoyed my last January video. If you haven't seen that canning of the beef stroganoff and the follow-up video where I showed you how to use those, I will link those in the description and I'll put a little card up here to the original canning video. And like I mentioned in those, this is hosted by Lisa over at Sutton Save. She is, I'm hosting this whole month of January. So January 1st through 31st, there are a video, there are videos each day showing you how to can some amazing, delicious things. Also, we have a wonderful sponsor. You guys all know them and love them by now, just like we do. It is Four Jars. So Four Jars is graciously giving away a pressure canner. They have an awesome new pressure canner on their website you can check it out through the link that i have below and you can use my code table um my table 10 to get your code off get 10 percent off your order but not only can you look at their amazing canners on their website but if you watch all the videos and comment you will be have a better chance at winning one of the great canners that they are giving away as a part of the sponsorship i believe they're also giving away a jar opener and some of their cute towels Lisa is also very generous in giving away a pressure canner and a steam canner as well. So lots of amazing prizes that you can pick up. If you are enjoying the videos, make sure you comment, like, and maybe you'll find some new channels that you are subscribing to. I know I've got some new followers here that I'm excited to share with more in the future. But like I mentioned before in the last video, I am using uh, this ball of all new book of canning and preserving. Um, I know I use the same book. Yes, I do have other canning books. I love them as well. But for right now, my focus is meals in a jar. I am trying to get more meals in a jar in my pantry. And today, I am going to film another one of the delicious meals called chicken and gravy dinner in a jar. I mean, does that not sound like comfort food in a jar? It is really simple, just as simple as the stroganoff, and you can make a ton of things with it as well. So let me go ahead and show you. I have all my stuff laid out here. The canner is over on the stove. You can't see it, but it is heating up. I just took my jars out. They are warm and ready to go. So let's get started and show you what we're doing. All right, friends, here is a look at my workstation. I just took my jars out of the sterilization, the water, the hot water, and I have everything set up. This is what I like to do in order to have a smooth and quick as possible jar loading. I get my ingredients done, um, jars, all my tools that I need, my lids, of course, the beautiful four jar lids. They've been in hot boiling water here. This is my vinegar and my paper towel to wipe my jars and my scale. And of course, the recipe, which is coming from this section. Once again, simple one jar meals in this ball candy book you've all seen by now. I use this same book. For my recipe to be stroking off you saw last time right there so what we're going to need here as you can see and there's no page numbers guys but i will tell you the last numbered page is 273 so there's that now i showed you all this let's go over the ingredients so we have some chopped onion chopped potatoes celery and chicken breast now i did go ahead and sear mine off um it is room temperature now, but I've done that just a few minutes ago because when I'm doing chicken, I, I just like to cook my chicken first in meals in the jar. So it's not cooked fully. It's just kind of browned off and it's still raw in the center. So that's important. Then our spices um, in this one are black pepper and salt, which I have mixed here and poultry seasoning, which kind of reminds me of Thanksgiving. It's got all kinds of stuff in it, like um, thyme, I think, and sage marjoram rosemary black pepper nutmeg so if you don't have poultry season and you have some of those individual spices you can add a little bit just know that this is kind of strong and all those seasons uh, that we read off here are kind of strong so go easy on those and now let me show you how i pack these jars and get them into i actually have got it started packing my chicken in my jars here just because for the sake of time yes i do have my handy dandy scale I have several of these in the kitchen, so I use them all the time, especially with my candy. But I'll go ahead and show you this called the recipe in this book, you guys, will make two pints or I mean sorry, two quarts or four pints. So make sure it's at zero. So for two quarts, uh, you will need like two pounds of chicken, 
and then a half a cup of all your vegetables. Now, someone asked me in the comments, or they mentioned that they wish we would give measurements and recipes. I totally understand that, wanting those recipes, and um, that one's not quite, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that a little bit less, because I wanna get six quarts, but make sure I get it all in there. Back to what I was saying. I want to be able to give you guys the recipe, and if I can find them online, I will also absolutely do that. However, keep in mind that the ball book, once a book has been published, then that um, recipe is then copyrighted. So as a blogger myself, I have lots of content um, that was given away or taken. And so I don't like to breach those copyright laws. So if I can find where someone else maybe has, I will definitely, trying to make sure this is even, okay. I will definitely give you guys a link to that, especially if Ball has it um, in their, um, published on their site. So there we have our chicken. This isn't quite a pound. It's almost a pound in each jar. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a measuring cup, measuring cup, and we're gonna put our veggies in. So let me do that and I'll come right back. All right, so uh, what I did guys is I went ahead and just reduced this down to five quarts. And I use that other quart of meat to make sure these were each a pound. Now there's plenty of meat. One thing I forgot to mention in my ingredients earlier is I have my hot turkey broth. I have turkey broth because that's what I had on my shelf. And we're going to use that to top these off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my seasoning in. Just because I like to put my seasoning in before I top it off. So this is a mixture of salt and pepper. And it equals out to about a half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt for each pint. The next thing we're gonna need is poultry season that we talked about. You can totally leave it out if you don't want to, or you can um, use those individual spices. And that is a teaspoon per jar. This is really gonna give it a nice savory comfort feeling. By all means, leave this one out if you don't like it. Now, Another ingredient that is listed in this recipe that I'm gonna to skip today is white wine. And you can do that. The ball book even says that it is optional. And I currently don't have any white wine, so we are going to leave it out. So salt, pepper, and poultry season. Now I'm gonna do, let's see, what shall I do next? Let's do our potatoes next. And this is just chopped potatoes. I use some gold that I'm putting in there. And chop them smaller and I put them in water you guys I canning can be for long days those of you that can often know so what I'm trying to do and make it easier on myself is last night before bed uh, before I cleaned the kitchen for the last time I went ahead and um, prepped like I cut out the potatoes I cut out the uh, onion well not the onions I actually did that this morning the chicken um, and got all that ready to go so it would be easier for me today because it does take a while and you don't want to get bogged down especially i have company coming later my son's friends from his robotics team is coming by and i want to have all this canned and filmed for you guys before they come so this is the celery you saw me put the potatoes now this is chopped celery and I'm just pressing it down. We still have onions to go. This is going to make a really savory dish, you guys. And you can make several things with this as well. Just like I showed you, you can make several things with the um, uh, stripping off. So next thing I'm going to do is chopped onions. I have about two quarts of my turkey stock in that tea kettle. I love that thing. I'll link it below. It helps me a lot in canning because I can have all my stuff heated when I do that. I'm pressing these down really good. We're going to put some uh, broth in and then debubble. 
All right, you guys, so let me... Let's go ahead and top these off. And this is warm bra, so my canner is warm over there. It is not going to be boiling because the other ingredients in this jar are not boiling. Um, but just, and if I don't have enough bras, I will top it off with some water, but I'll probably have pretty close enough turkey bra. And then you guys know the rest of the steps, right? We're going to debubble with our handy dandy debubbler, which also is used. All right, guys, my video cut off, so I don't quite know, but I did go ahead and top all these off with our turkey stock, and now we are just in the debubbling process. And we're going to make sure that that is slightly below that one inch head space. getting all the bowls out okay now I'm going to check my head space because again with this debubbler there is a measurement right here that you can use to make sure that you are where you should be and sometimes you may be a little bit but you can take off It over so we're gonna scoop some of that out really quick yes so there we go real quick we're gonna do our vinegar you guys know what's next you're gonna clean your jar really rims really well just make sure there's no grease from the meat or slices or anything that will keep your four jar lids from sealing properly and we're going to go ahead and put our lids I have got them out of the water put them on our five quart got our rings and tell me how tight do we tighten them do we tighten them super tight nope just fingertip tight you guys know what that means right it just means put it over I put my finger here to center and Sometimes it's a lid side on there, it's not as easy. Center it, put your ring, and you go until it stops, and then you just go, doop, and there you go. There's a good example. Do you see this ring? You may not can tell it, but it's a little bit bent. So this one, it's time for me to retire it. So I will actually throw that one away and grab one that's not bent. But that's all I'm gonna do, guys. Put all the rest of these rings on figured it tight and these will go in the canner i'll bring it back and tell you talk about that in just a minute all right guys so it is a few hours these come out of the canner about two hours ago maybe three hours ago but i have had company since then and have not been able to i took them out but i've not been able to come back and film and show you guys but look at that how beautiful those you can see the pieces of chicken the potatoes and the seasonings you can see the seasonings on the jar there. They are just beautiful, don't you think? I'm so excited about having them on this shelf. All right, guys, you can see, like I said, it is dark. So I didn't get to show you when I took these out of the canner, but they have all sealed. Now, you know the drill, right? Once they come out of the canner, you set them somewhere where they will not be touched. Leave the rings on them and you'll hear them pop. All of these have already sealed. So I will leave these here overnight. <laughs> After about 12 hours, I will take the rings off, make sure I have a good seal, and then I'll wash them down with warm, soapy water. And then I let mine set an additional few hours on the counter, but then they will be written on the top. I always label mine what it is and the date that I canned it, and I put it in my pantry shelf, so we'll have those meals. Now, uh, since it's coming out on Thursday, I won't have another video until probably maybe the next week i can show you guys how to use this if you're wanting ideas i definitely will have it on my blog soon mytable3.com if you want to check that different ways you can use this but if you want to see another follow-up video like that series i started i canned it now what 
with this chicken and gravy dinner, let me know and I will definitely put one out for you. But right now I am going to remind you of the amazing giveaway for those pressure canners, the steam canner. Make sure you're watching all the videos. we got a few days left in January. What's today? The 25th that you're watching this. So, yeah. Got about another six days. And on the 31st, over on Lisa at Sutton's Day's channel, you will find she is having the live giveaway where you can go and hang out. I'm going to try and be there if I can and see if you want any of those great prizes. So, until the next time video, uh, next video that I put out, find me over on Instagram at mytable 3 on Facebook at My Table 3 and over on my blog, you can find lots of low-carb, gluten-free uh, recipes as well. So, you guys, thanks so much for watching and stopping by. Hit a thumbs up if this has helped you at all, and I will see you guys in the next one.